I'll just start a little bit, uh, just telling you a little bit about my background and how I got into being an artist. I really came from a background of music. My mother was a coloratura soprano. Uh, my brother took up my grandfather's trombone. Yeah. And my father said he played the phonograph, uh, that he had an extensive uh, record collection back in the day. Uh, so music really was uh, the grounding of my, my whole my whole life, really. Uh, I went to Manhattan School of Music in New York. And uh, let's see if I can. And I played professionally for about 30 years. Um, I played a lot of musical theater. And at one point, I was playing West Side Story and fell in love with Riff. And he became my husband. <laughs> I was in the I was in the pit and he was on the stage. Uh, that's how we met. Um, about uh, a number of years later, we were living. This is in Santa Barbara. We moved to Los Angeles for his work and then uh, moved to Japan at one point. Well, I, I left my horn home and went to Japan without it. But I had a neighbor. Uh, I got to meet and I won't go into all the uh, ins and outs of learning Japanese, uh, but it was a great time there. And I started to do Shoto. I took uh, classes with five year olds uh, to learn the uh, Japanese calligraphy and that developed my hand uh, for, and I'll show you some pieces that was the result of that. So everything in our lives, how one thing always leads, leads to another. Uh, when we got back from Japan, of course, I, at that point, then I really missed my music. So I, we moved back to Santa Barbara and I enrolled in an art class through adult ed and uh, took up watercolor because well, mainly because I thought it would be the cheapest thing to do. <laughs> I thought oils, ah, that's way too expensive and all those canvases. Uh, so I started with, uh, with watercolor. And I really devoted myself to watercolor, uh, feeling that it was an under, uh, underappreciated medium. I went to galleries in New York and watercolor cost next to nothing. Uh, next to oil paintings or even acrylic paintings. And at one point, I, I got kind of snarky with a, a gallery owner about why uh, the watercolors, they were so beautiful. Why, uh, why didn't the uh, price uh, re reflect that? Anyway, uh, for me, uh, music really is, uh, a big influence in my painting. Uh, it's just inherent in my being, for, uh, music. Um, I'll, I'll read a little bit uh, about, oh, a little bit from my artist statement. Uh, ordinary everyday people and I do figurative work 90% of the time. Uh, so everyday people become central to my work. Each painting offers an opportunity to discover a new insight into how we act, how we react, do, think, worry, enjoy, or ponder. In aiming for the communicative and emotional qualities in my work, uh, degrees of abstraction come into play. Uh, there's real no formula, just desire and some routine involved in my work. Uh, so I come to art painting from a side door, from a, uh, from a world of sound to a visual uh, 
world of art. Uh, so, but they're really kindred spirits. Um, even the language is the same. Tones, we talk about tone uh, and harmony, rhythm, of course, color in both mediums. Um, and in music, there's a physicality associated uh, in playing, especially like French horn, very physical. Uh, but there is an association with uh, creating a painting as well. The feeling of uh, sliding paint onto paper, which I work mostly on paper. Uh, and the whole action of our mind and body in the process. A musician, a musician responds to the intent of a piece being played, uh, embodying its nature in order to bring it to life. And I think that we do that with our painting in the visual form. Um, what we see, what, uh, what is it we feel about what we want to paint, delivering that message. I find that very much uh, akin to playing music. So um, that was really how I began. And I think I'll go into sharing what I have. And I, so please do ask questions. And we didn't try this out. I'm hoping that this will work. I hope that you just see the slide and not all my notes. Of course, I, there's the slides, but I don't see my notes. So oh, let's see, I wonder if I can, no, okay. I'm just gonna wing it here because I don't see my notes. Uh, uh, Ruth, excuse me, yes. Are, do you have your notes on your slides? You have, uh, to, yeah. put, you have to put it under view. Okay. Ah, um, presenter view. Oh, let's Is see. A keynote. I uh, I'm out because I don't use Keynote. I apologize. Somebody else I, might help you. Let's mm -hmm. just see. Let me. R Ruth, it was showing. Go back to view menu. Go back to view, and show the things that were coming down on it on your in Keynote. Okay, Inspector? for Zoom, come down to Zoom. Ah, go okay. out. No, it doesn't show there. Um, doesn't show there. I don't think it's. Open, I don't think it's opened in Keynote. It looks like we're seeing her desktop. She's working with her desktop, not Keynote. Right. Do you do you know where your presentation is? Is it called Me? Mm -hmm. Is that your presentation? Ah, uh, let me just see what Keynote. Well, let's see. I have. Or go under file oh. and let's go for open. Or so it's like open research. Let me see if it's open. Let me see if this is it. I may have. It looks like notes. I think you haven't opened it in uh, let's share yet. I think you need to click share to open that up. You know, you haven't clicked the share button yet. Oh, okay. Up here? Oh, no. The top? Is it, don't you have a, a button, a green button that says share? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, click click on the one you're at, but then go to the... Go over one to the right. You were just there. It's in that... It's the fourth one over in that row. Does it say share, I think? Come down a little bit, just as it's. Uh, share, share should be a big button that you see. Oh, shape. With, shape. with the uh, uh, share uh, screen. Uh, I don't know. The, the other way under Keynote is to go into the file menu and look under open recent, and it should show up. Because you've. Uh, open or just open file. You're in Firefox right now. Okay, You're see, not in I'm not. You have to click on the keynote. Okay, now go to file. Oh. Open recent. Okay. I see. I click on that. 
So I think you've already got it open. It's there. It just yeah. is. Maybe if you go to view. Oh no, try the green view. button. The green button will make it full screen. The green button on the left. On green the left. button. I don't think we can. No. <laughs> uh, go all the way over to the edge where it says view. Go all the way to the other side. No, other no, no. Side. Take your cursor. Take your cursor. See where it says view. No, no, no. Go down onto the keynote. Um, right there. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Click. <laughs> okay. Navigator. Okay. I that I couldn't tell you, but that's what you're in now. Try okay. slide only. Go to slide only. Yeah. Slide only. Slide yeah. only. We still see me. You know what? And then if you click uh, that little oops. green button, <laughs> I just do. Uh, nice. We really need to do run throughs. Okay, try. There you go. I'm just, hey, hey. I'm gonna wing it. I'm just gonna wing it, not to worry. Oops! I just dropped my earbud. Now, if you could make it full screen so we don't see your desktop behind. That right. So. I'm going to play, go from play? No. No, that's your desktop. Probably if you use your mouse and just click your mouse, or I don't know what makes the next one come up. You went, you went under a presenter, show presenters view. Mm. Under yeah, keynote. You're fine. That's high presenters display. So I don't know um, why it's not going. Uh, so it's using your arrows. Not sharing. Yeah. So Ruth, let's. Uh, can you do full screen and and wing it? Yeah, I don't know why it's not doing full screen. Now let me see if I can get my. Can, can you pull it from a corner out? Just stretch it. Yeah, from the corner, go to the corner of. Oh, there. Also, if you if you if you just now if you had the green dot, it just showed up. Oh well. Is that full? No. You see the desktop behind it. That's so weird. I'm so sorry. That's right. Maybe you if you, I, maybe I, if you I, stopped the share and came back in, it might work better. Okay, let's do okay, so let me go down to the bottom, this screen share, and I go to my Keynote, right? Now it's full screen. screen. It is full screen? Yeah, but it's yeah. just using now, now you got it. Full screen. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. But I'm not seeing pictures. Any oh, there we go. There okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Uh I had I had reasoning behind all this. Uh, so going back to my roots in in watercolor, uh, in Santa Barbara, everybody does plein air. It's so beautiful. The weather's always beautiful. So everybody goes out and they paint plein air. Well, there were so many great plein air painters in Santa Barbara. I decided that I wasn't going to do that. That I wanted to paint people. So uh, I started with my Shoto with the idea of line. Uh, so these first, these are early uh, watercolor paintings where I'm using a lot of line. Um, it seemed a natural thing for me. So I, I'm gonna go through, uh, oh. my husband and I love to dance so I have a whole slew of paintings. I did a uh, dancing, uh, I think this is called Boogie Down. <laughs> but they're line oriented, as you can see. This is air guitar. <laughs> I started out with cobalt blue. Did you start and out this abstract? Yeah, and I there's a lot of opaque uh, paint in in this as well. 
uh, using white opaque watercolor. So these are early things that I did. A lot what, of line. What fun. Then I, uh, all along I was experimenting with the abstraction. And so this one is called, She Danced All Night. Then I'm still using it here, uh, more about musician, musicians. Mm. So these, again, these are all watercolor. This painting, you can see line in it, uh, but it wasn't my first objective. Um, but it is all watercolor and there's uh, a bit of uh, opaque watercolor. And I entered it into American Watercolor Society and got a big award and it went on tour. <laughs> So that, that was fun. I felt like I had arrived with that. And it was part of a, a series. I always work in a series, part of a cowboy series. Uh, uh, here's a uh, series. I think when I work in a series, uh, I was thinking about it and the idea of inspiration uh, in our work Yet, I really think that for me, my work, I work in a series because I'm working through a challenge, something that I want to learn uh, how to do. And so in these, I wanted to figure out how to make watercolor look like rain. Uh, and so I did, oh, bunches of the, these are, about 30 by 10 uh, paintings. I did bunches of them just to figure out how to make it look like it's raining. Mm -hmm. Then I graduated and now this one is 40 by 26. This is called Red Dress. <laughs> and what is really funny to me is it, it sold to somebody in Seattle. <laughs> He bought it here in Santa Barbara and took it to, to Seattle, where it actually rains. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, 60 by 40. Mm. So I gradually got uh, larger and larger. And this has hundreds of layers of uh, transparent watercolor. Mm. Literally, <laughs> hundreds well, of layers. Ruth, when you yeah. layers that are on top of each other or different areas that you had to do hundreds of layers in different areas? Uh, a combination, yeah. It would be done in areas, uh, building up areas, but working on, on the whole thing. Uh, but yes, you're right. Uh, work in an area like I'd put like these little characters up here, and then you just uh, let the water drip down, and then using a hair dryer and drying it and doing another section. Uh, so this is, it's a lot of very time consuming, great way to procrastinate and just take your, watercolor takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this, in order to get the depth of color uh, and the depth of the color in the reflection uh, for the watercolor and have it keep, stay on trans transparent, uh, take a lot of, lot of layers. Mm. This one is acrylic. Later on when I was working acrylic I continue that series. So you can see the big difference. Watercolor compared to acrylic. Mm. Acrylic is stationary. 
Um, I got interested in working in India Inc. and I can't quite remember what took me there, but I, uh, I liked the idea of drawing with India Inc. And I did done a lot of drawing. And in here there's poetry. My, I write a lot of poetry. So there's poetry embedded in here. Uh, and you can see music influences uh, with this kind of work. Uh, and so this is New York influenced. You'll see a lot of my work is New York influenced. So this is lined that was done with Black India ink and then mm -hmm. uh, coloring it in. Mm -hmm. Again, this is New York. So you have to imagine starting with the India ink, so it's just black and white, and then bringing in watercolor. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes my sense of humor takes over painting. This is New York City in June. Mm -hmm. Baby buggies. This is uh, for a trip to uh, Radio City uh, ice skating rink. This is called uh, Labyrinth because I was at MoMA and this is a de Kooning painting uh, called Labyrinth, a huge painting. But the characters are started out with watercolor, excuse me, India ink. This is in doubt. The uh, scruffiness of the line, it's done with a chip brush from the, um, the hardware store. So you, you see a lot of double lines. It's just the way that kind of brush works, but I was enjoying that scruffiness. Uh, I was working for about a year uh, with this uh, India ink uh, approach to starting the paintings. And I got so that I didn't have much left to enter into competitions and uh, so forth. And this, I, so I, I just wasn't confident that it was any good. They were so scruffy and uh, gestural, but I had nothing else to enter. So I entered this into uh, San Diego Watercolor Society. And as it turned out, uh, it won top honors. Uh, and that became uh, a conversation with Nicholas Simmons, uh, probably don't know him, but wonderful uh, watercolor artist, and it turns out that he has also uh, started out in music. So that we had that in common was uh, a wonderful uh, exchange. And just uh, a year or so after this, uh, he passed away un unexpectedly. So I treasure that, that time. But a funny little painting is a big, well, it was not a little painting at all. Uh, This is also starting with a black and white and layers upon layers upon layers of watercolor to build up that glow. These photographs don't do them justice because it's the, uh, the watercolor, it just, it glows, but it's very soft. And these colors kind of look harsh in here, um, but the actual watercolors, they're, they're, uh, they're quite beautiful to building up those layers and modulating the color throughout. I wish I had uh, a camera to actually capture the colors. Being a horn player, I have tickets to the Los Angeles uh, Symphony and my, I sit right behind the first horn player and look at Dudamel. 
<laughs> huh. And uh, this, this painting is called Waiting for the Dude. Uh, and you'll see a lot of my work is patched together uh, pieces of, of sketches that I do. Um, so I sit in the balcony overlooking the horn players and sketch. Here's the first horn player right here. And I'm also very involved with, in Santa Barbara, there's the Music Academy of the West uh, here and I, eight weeks during the summer, I'm very involved there. Uh, so these are students at the Music Academy that I paint. These, I often will paint paintings and give them to either the artist. This is uh, the base, uh, Nick Abuaro, and uh, he's the teacher and he had his daughter there and I painted that and gave it to him. This is, this is called Promenade, going into the Granada Theater uh, for rehearsal. Uh, and uh, Scott Reed saw it and commissioned uh, one for the Music Academy. And, but I had cut this in half uh, so I could transport it. It's uh, nine feet long. So I painted it again, slightly differently, uh, and it now hangs at the Music Academy. This is a Music Academy student. This is called Three Men on Bass. This is master class. This was also in uh, American Watercolor Society, was accepted. It's now at the Music Academy. This is a recent uh, painting. This one is an acrylic. It's, uh, it's in the, the sale that's going on right now at the Music Academy, raise money. French horn player, this young man at 19 uh, became first horn of the Cleveland Symphony. I had to paint him, just charming young man. This is acrylic. This is also at the Music Academy. And I do a lot of uh, uh, work where building a story and compiling images, we call them constructions. I find those silhouettes beautiful in there. This one? The black silhouette figures, they, they add like a, a, a note of, of interest and, and visual beauty. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's the India ink that I, I really enjoy working with that. Mm -hmm. This one as well. Um, this is a question in the chat. Do you work from sketches or photos or how do you approach these works? Uh, I, I do a lot of sketching. I do a lot of sketching and then, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, the sketches, then I, I'll, photo I'll uh, Xerox them out of my sketchbook and start arranging them. Okay. So, uh, and then they're on abstracted backgrounds. Mm -hmm. This one's called It Don't Mean a Thing. <laughs> my husband names my paintings. If it ain't got that swing. Ain't got that swing. <laughs> Songs for a blue day. Ruth, how long ago did you actually start? In 97. Okay. About 25 years now. Great. Like and I'm not sure when you were referencing the, um, the commonality in terms, but it strikes me, and you may have used this term, but uh, your composition visually is quite wonderful. <laughs> and the overlay of that term <laughs> into music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see, you know, how, how much the two go together for me. Right. This, this painting, 
um, is when I adopted the, this is all my students know this. <laughs> uh, you, with watercolor, people think, oh, you make a mistake, you might as well throw it away. Um, but my creed is uh, we don't make mistakes. We're women, we're strong. We don't make mistakes, we just change our minds. Uh, <laughs> so you see this toe here. Uh, the black India ink just dripped down. I thought, oh. So I just had to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this character on the end, this is 12 feet long. This is my brother, and this is called my brother's band. He's still playing trombone. Mm -hmm. So you see all kinds of little characters in here superimposed. Uh, <laughs> so you can go around and <laughs> see my little dancers and everything else. Uh, so most of what I just showed you is watercolor. Um, but then uh, I got a commission to do these murals in what in Santa Barbara here in the funk zone where my, my galleries, uh, this is just around the corner really from the gallery. Uh, and it was the history of the funk zone that was the assignment I was given. Uh, they uh, left it to me to figure out what that was going to be. So this is my first time really putting to, from absolute scratch, trying to figure out, okay, the history of the funk zone. So I had to do a lot of research um, and that took a long time, but how to, how to present it? What, you know, what form would it take? Uh, so I had all these characters and, uh, and they, a lot, there's Jonathan Winters in here. Uh, there, there's a lot of people that had my, up to this point, I never bothered really too much with people's faces. Uh, they're just, you may have noticed that they were sort of blank. Um, and it was in the gesture. Uh, here, there was so many people that are real people that I had to learn how to portray accurately what somebody looks like. And on top of it, all my watercolor, I couldn't do mural in watercolor. Uh, I had to learn acrylic. So um, that putting those two things together, it took me about seven or eight months to, to do this. Mm -hmm. And I did them in my studio. Uh, I had mocked it up in squares and then uh, had had to trace all of that and take it to a blue, uh, blueprint place and have it blown up like 220% or something like that. Uh, trace that and then started painting it. Uh, so, uh, and I won't even take the time to tell you all else that that involved, uh, but I figured out it's, they're on six panels each. And so the top three, I started at the top three down where I could stand and, and work it. And these are each about almost 11 by 12 feet. Uh, so the top half got painted on each of them. And then uh, I had some guys put them up on the ceiling, you know, towards the ceiling and put the bottom three. Uh, so that's how I worked through that. And then it was mounted on the wall. So here's another series. I'll go through this pretty quickly because I think we're going um, Just to a quick hand. question, Ruth. Are yeah. those painted on canvas? Did you paint those? Uh, uh, no, it was, uh, um, oh shoot, poly, poly tab a non-woven fabric because it didn't want it to stretch or anything. So it's poly tap and layers and layers of uh, flex gel on them to create a surface. Uh, and then like three layers of gesso on top of that. Uh, and that created the, uh, instead of canvas, the surface that it was painted on. And that 
was then uh, mounted. So polytap. So I had to create the material. I had to create the surface as well as and paint it. That took a few weeks. So uh, a friend of mine, uh, I never painted children because they're just too cute and so forth. But uh, if you know Catherine Chang Lu, she had introduced, uh, she did a program of children that were not cute. Uh, and so I took that as a challenge myself. At some point I decided that I wanted to do children, I would do it children, but children that are on the edge uh, of, of something. And each one of these, I wrote a little story that went with it and eventually it got uh, published in Palette Magazine. So this is Kitty with Cats. And this is the most abstract one. I really wanted to work this way, but then I got uh, too literal. Boy with bugs. <laughs> Fiona's. Let's <laughs> see response. Amelia's life. Jade, my New York City girl. Now this is uh, <laughs> uh, Mary and Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in in talking with a, a few friends about it, uh, they didn't think that Joseph was as well done as Mary. So Mary, <laughs> Joseph went bye bye. <laughs> so just have Mary there. Uh, I this is stars and stripes. Uh, spark, uh, evening soliloquy, mm. uh, Sophia, little man, and there is a. It is about a, it's a series of about twenty five. Uh, and so they each have a, a little story that go with them. Are these, anyway, this uh, are they acrylic that, or watercolor? Yes, they, these are all in acrylic. Acrylic. Yeah. Thank you. Once I started doing acrylic, I, I confess I did more in acrylic than watercolor, although I still teach uh, watercolor and I still do paint in watercolor, but uh, acrylic is easier, faster. This is a little boy, a little orphan uh, in Rio de Janeiro. I won't go into this story. Uh, this is acrylic. I started uh, working, uh, these are, this is large, but I started painting my poetry. Um, just a couple of these. Uh, and as, I don't know why I put my New York influence because you've already seen a lot of the New York influence. But uh, this is now watercolor, but in the India ink. Um, someday in the park, but it's larger. It's 53 by 58, something like that. I enjoy doing these lots of characters. I'm not quite sure. And then you see uh, this, uh, the baby carriage or the stroller here. That's in uh, that big one, uh, the call commotion, the tall one I showed you back a little bit. So my characters will reappear. <laughs> this, this one was a watercolor. He's got this guy with his two dogs. Uh, so they, I reuse my characters. I tell them they cannot be in more than three paintings. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is watercolor. Uh, this is down in Soho. Uh, this is Gramercy, Gramercy Park. This, this dog was uh, in, he's been in a couple of other paintings. This is uh, another one that was in American watercolor. And this is watercolor. Um, and the challenge here was 
to do watercolor really dark and really red. Uh, and it's, it's very abstract. And this little character up here, I didn't really want the audience to notice her, but uh, I have a theme. Um, I do most of my flying at night in a red polka dot dress. <laughs> uh, so here, here she is. So this was a fun one to do. That's Little Italy. If you ever go to Little Italy in New York, that's what it'll look like. This is the Festival of St. Anthony's. Uh, this is uh, New York as well, rock, paper, scissors. And you see a very little uh, ode to the face um, or hands, just gestural. Uh, this is, yeah, this is acrylic. So you see, I'll, 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 I paint abstractly, but I also will then render things more carefully. There's a lot of um, metallic paint on here that is reflective, fun. Uh, this is a guy on the subway down in, uh, under the bowels of New York City there in the subway that goes underneath all the streets, so especially between, and the big, biggest follow between uh, Times Square and Grand Central. And here's Blaine. Waiting for the subway. This is called Light Nights. Uh, these two people were not together, but I put them together. Uh, and then I asked my husband to, he's a writer. Uh, I couldn't figure out what to title it. Uh, and he called it Table for Two. And that somehow or other put them, I intended when I drew this before painting it, they felt they worked together. But after painting it, they did not feel like they worked together. Uh, and uh, so table for two, for me, pulled them back together again. Play date. Mm -hmm. uh, then I, my, a little bit of silliness, uh, I, of uh, humor. This is in, uh, what's the name of the Central Central Park? This character has been in a few paintings. Barn dance. There's New York City in the background. This was uh, riffing on my own teenagehood because uh, we lived on Long Island, and if you really squinted, you could see New York City in the background. <laughs> what size is that? Was that one the this one here? Yeah. What scale? What size? Oh, it's a full sheet, uh, 21 by 30. Okay. Watercolor paper. Yeah, okay. Uh, these start out very abstract and then become more realistic. This was 10th Street down in the village. This is a theater in the village. Uh, this is the subway <laughs> of the, between Grand Central and Times Square. Uh, these characters were not together, but I created it. And the wallpaper? Uh, there was something like this. They were, it was advertising Taiwan. <laughs> at some point in the subway. Uh, so I thought uh, that that would be a fun thing to do. Uh, another thing at the subways, uh, this is called uh, My Words to You. And the subway system uh, has poetry, you know, posters uh, of poetry. And that was one of the pieces of poetry on this particular car when I was sketching. Uh, my words to you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This is 26 by 40. 
Is that earring painted or is it collaged on? It's paint collaged on. Uh, the my my uh, acrylic comes in jars. Nova use Nova paint, and the one of the metallic paints was had gotten dried out on, on the top of the rim. So I took it off and I just glued it on. <laughs> So it's three-dimensional. It works great. This is Delft and Indigo. So I can get very realistic when I want to. Uh, I was intrigued. I saw this girl, um, Art on Paper, um, big show in New York. And... Uh, I was intrigued by, I wanted to paint these stripes. Mm. During COVID, I'll get New York again. This is not, this is uh, acrylic. It's not <clears throat> India ink. Uh, I'll take you around and you'll get to see it. This is Central Bark. There's a dozen dogs. <laughs> I wanted to experiment. I bought a bunch of Nova paints, uh, all the um, uh, fluorescent paints, and I was using up old paper. There's a, it's a large piece of paper, so I didn't want to throw it away. So I turned it in the other direction and started painting on it. Uh, ex exploration of transparent uh, acrylics. I know transparency with watercolor, but I didn't know what paints were transparent in acrylic. So I did a whole series working on that idea. And this is um, during COVID there, actually I ran out of time and I was not painting a whole lot. So I started doing these 10 by 10, 10 by 11 uh, paintings. And I gave myself the challenge of painting 50 I wound up doing a hundred or so. So these are little, uh, and the, the idea was 20 minutes, no drawing, just paint, because I wasn't getting to paint. Uh, so these are not drawn, they're just 20 minute little painting doodles. But it loosened, it, it loosened me up in a way that uh, I hadn't found before. I pretty much, my paintings, you can see, I, I draw them uh, before I start to paint them. And these were just painted uh, without drawing. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, although I have to say that this one, um, <laughs> this is what a cello player I saw in New York, naturally. Uh, and I wound up doing him again with a whole lot more realism. And this is 30 by 30. Uh, I do do nature once in a while for Lotus Land. If those of you that are in Santa Barbara know Lotus Land. It was a big show last year and I did a couple of paintings. This is acrylic tulip tree and aloe. This is fairly good size. Can't remember how big. Uh, anyway, so that led me to uh, wanting to paint larger, those, doing those little uh, 10 by 11s. So I'll show you, this is oh, 55 by 57 or so. But painting just out of my head and not um, being so careful. I'll, sh I'll show you that. And that's really, this is the last one I'm going to show you. This is also about the same size. Uh, it has three different paintings underneath. I just uh, starting to paint and it just nothing was working. And oh, yeah, yeah, it's such a large piece of paper. I didn't want to throw it away. Uh, so Rich and I had gone to this uh, tango uh, concert dance. 
down on Haley Street, most of you in Santa Barbara. Uh, and I was transformed back into our dancing days. We haven't been dancing lately. Anyway, so I came back and I just started drawing these characters like I do um, all over the paper. Um, there's not a whole much ode to scale involved. Uh, so I'll show you this one too. And that's it. That was probably way more than 15 minutes. Yay. <laughs> so I'll stop so, that share. Uh, we can are there go any back. questions? I think, first of all, I'm so wowed by your color uh, combinations and color compositions. They're really amazing. And your breath, I mean, when you said it, take, it only took you eight months to do those large murals, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a short time to do that size. Well, so quite that a story, uh, I was not supposed to have a timeline. And I tell you, uh, it was three months of just um, research mm -hmm. uh, and gathering images and, and so forth. And then to try to figure out how to present it. Then all of a sudden, uh, one of the principals involved was going to New York and he wanted it done on his watch. Uh, so in the end, the last, the last week I was painting up to 12 hours a day and the last two days I painted 24 hours straight. Wow. <laughs> they were putting it up and I'm still, I was still in the studio painting the bottom <laughs> of the Amazing. second mural. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Maria has a, a question. Yeah, uh, it's not really a question, it's a comment. Uh, I love the fluidity of your work in your watercolors. There is such a free kind of sense when you hold the brush and move it around. And uh, that is uh, really exciting. Uh, <laughs> And I also think that one of the pieces, if you can go back to the piece that shows um, perspective from uh, all the way up to a, a, a pole, a stand, uh, which is a little more thought out piece. Uh, I think I'd like to say something about that because uh, you have such skill in your hand and you have such fluidity in the work and you can also control it when you need to, like your murals and mm -hmm. other, other works, which makes it a very uh, wonderful opportunity for you and for us. Uh, go back even farther, um, even though yeah, go, go back to the place where it, you moved from one series to another. Let's see. Uh, by the way, that little girl with the, with the stripes that you wanted to paint, oh. the question was, uh, are you taking a picture when you see that? That I used, yes, I did use a photo. So your memory, uh, your memory is fresh with it. Yeah, I, I, I would think that you would help use that as a tool to mm. remember yes. things. But yeah. uh, that particular picture that really impressed me, if you keep on going back, <laughs> was uh, a very uh, telling opportunity for you. Um, and I think it was before New York the expression that you find in, in uh, the kids, the faces, all that is, this one? You know, that, that, that's it, that's it. Now let's just look at this for a minute and how you are dealing here with uh, perspective. Uh -huh. is, in, in one way, in one way you kind of didn't what? actually, you didn't push the front, portion very big which a perspective painting would do that 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then moved into the smaller. The relationship between the, the, the characters right up front is almost the same, almost. It, you just slightly change the size of it as you go up and you get the, under, the understanding is there to create a perspective and opportunity of change and motion and flags and a piano at the end. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's really a kind of an, it, it makes the painting very interesting because the interest, the, I don't know, this is watercolor too, right? Yes, yeah. And India ink. Yeah. And India ink. Maria, when I saw this, I thought of it as, as if she had painted on a score. It had a very, it's almost as if I had this, as we were going through this, this experience of what her experience was when she was making music, looking at a score at notes. Mm -hmm. And this with the horizontal lines brought to my mind, and this is just my imagination. It may not have anything to do, uh, Ruth, with where you, what you do or what you think or conceive. But my association with it was that it was, that this was most, it, it was almost like it was the, the way you would have, you know, a, you, if you were doing a composition musically, you would have the lines mm -hmm. going across and then you would fill in the notes. And I had this sense that this, in some way, um, bits, parts of this, the part where I'm seeing the horizontal brought that experience to life for me, which might not be at all related to Ruth's intent. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll I take think, it. <laughs> I think, Sandra, when you said that this looks like a flat image, actually, of a floor, uh, it changed the relationship. But I don't think that's what you had in mind, Ruth. I had the, the, thing, the idea that you wanted to create a space that fills in with different experiences, you know, all the way from this mm -hmm. trombonist yeah. to the woman who is walking around with her bag. Is this the woman? It's, you know? it, it, it's and, not that at all. It's not a floor. It's as if the floor has come up vertically. It's this aspect that happens in art all the time where something is on the horizon, on the ground. Like when you do a painting, a, a photograph that has a shadow in it, by definition, it's on the ground. But when you present it, it's vertical. And this has happened here. The floor has come up for me in a vertical presentation. Does that make any sense? Yes, of course. It's all what the eye beholds, you yeah. know, in, in general, in art. So... I'm, I'm putting this up just as a, a way to discuss um, the perspective that you have seen here or brought it into the painting. And uh, we can interpret it the way Sandra is suggesting, but what was your idea here? Well, uh... I had taken a trip to New York with my daughter and she's sitting on the steps of the New York Library, the Fifth Avenue <laughs> New York Library. So that's actually, that's where it started. Uh, of course, her dog was not there, but um, uh, she was sitting there and, uh, and so it's actually a, a pretty personal piece uh, that we, uh, the, it was, we were there during the time when Bin Laden had been killed and we walked with, uh, down to ground zero and, uh, it's emotional to me just to even think about it, but you know, the veterans were there, uh, with flags on their back, uh, and it was just very poignant. So that was one thing. Uh, this gal, she was in Times Square hawking tickets for shows. Uh, they, so these are all characters we saw. This was down at Grand, Ground Zero as well. Um, this character here uh, was a sculpture in MoMA. Uh, in a room and in the middle of the room, uh, beautiful sculpture. 
and I decided to take it out on the sidewalk just for fun. Uh, this is the dog I, that was in one of the other paintings that I showed you. Uh, this is uh, this is flipped in the other direction, but the woman pushing the the stroller. Uh, this guy has turned up in a couple uh, of paintings. And also here. So all of these characters, all of these people we saw, pretty much we saw in New York. Uh, there's, no, that's a different one. Uh, except this little girl, um, the a student of mine, uh, and I told you about this drip, but it, it was an opportunity to make it more abstract. The, uh, a lot of days you notice that the <clears throat> setting is abstract, even if the characters aren't terribly abstract. Uh, and then you'll notice is dogs. Yeah. Uh, and the last. Ruth, uh, yeah? how, how large is this space? This is um, 85 by 53. Wow. So it's quite a lot. So, yeah. So it's Ruth, I noticed that you always have an element of surprise. Like I, I noticed that uh, the, the sculpture that's sitting there and the flying. Yeah the flying girl that was in the one painting. And you always add something that is kind of like out of place in the scene. So <laughs> is that intentional? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would say that I am happy to have experienced your work. It's oh. really oh. wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is that your brother in it? Uh, that, yes. <laughs> and this dog kind of takes us in yeah. the whole, looking yeah. into the painting, takes us through. Fantastic. Are there any more questions or comments? I know Monica also made, oh uh, yes, Pamela. Well, I was just looking at this one some more, and I love that like some of the figures are articulated like with with detail, and then you have some that are kind of silhouetted but filled in with washes, and then you have the others that are are the 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 black silhouetted ones, and it almost feels to me like different instruments. You know, going along the musical um, analogy or metaphor, um, it feels like you know the the ones with the the nuanced. Is, is some sort of a, you know, a, a bassoon or something, you know, like each, each of the types have different instrumental uh, tones or weights to them. It, it's it's uh, marvelous because it's, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle in a certain way in that it's pieces put together, but then you, you get fascinated by, by all the pieces and what they're doing and, and how they're relating to each other stupendous work and I, I just I absolutely love the, the looser stuff with beautiful color oh my gosh your sense of color is extraordinary I just I, I'm getting shivers just talking about it it's wonderful oh, thanks. thanks I would like to say something about <gasps> your work Ruth uh, first of all I think that it's amazing uh, all the, the the posture of the, the diversity of posture of people and the personality. But one thing that I, I noticed, uh, it's not in all of the painting, but most of them, like for example here, it sounds like every character is in is his or her own bubble. There is no interaction between the characters. They are completely, they, they don't look to each other. They are completely, you know, it, it, it reminds me of Edward Hopper was that famous um, painting where you know you have the woman who's by herself and the man who is by himself and they are together in the same place but they they don't have any there's no interaction and so I was wondering because you explained also that you what you do you you do a lot of sketch so you have this accumulation of sketches so what it looks like and that you took all those sketches but because when you sketch one person, just one person. And so 
you did here you can see that's maybe the reason why there is no interaction because they were it was one single individual that you sketch and then you put it with the other but there is no there is no this idea of togetherness mm -hmm. uh, they, they they are very uh, uh separated they you know each of them they mm -hmm. have their lives and you know that could reflect the life in new york you know, yes, some people are very. That's exactly. Are very, yeah. like okay, I don't have time. You know, I have to do my thing, and then yeah. you know, maybe one day we'll talk. You know, <laughs> I can be distracted. Yes. So you see them; they are all, all busy. You know, with their lives. Yeah. Like the guy, you know, is, is completely into his phone. You know, talking to somebody, and this is very ironic because, you know, love is like is like a, a commodity. You know, <laughs> like you could have like uh, like some type of uh, cart or something. You know, it, it, it's like love. Like <laughs> and and uh, so they they are all in their in their lives. They have their goals. They have their desire and things, but they don't communicate to each other. They yeah. don't. There's no communication. There's no. So yeah. I did a uh, I did a whole, and that is the experience of New York. Yeah. You're, you're alone in a crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did a whole series called uh, Connect, Disconnect. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just exploring that very idea of how we can be you know, together, but we're very much like exactly like you say, we're on our own path. We're doing our own, own thing. Yeah. Uh, and the only one, so, I'm, a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the only one, which is really ironic, the only one that is looking at everybody is the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Kozo. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. what it means, but. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ruth, thank you. It's, it's 8.09 or 8.14 now, and I'm so happy to have seen your work and have you talk about it. Um, are there any more comments? Well, was she going to show us her gallery a little bit or no? I can. I can show you. Ah. I'll and take and, a um, and Quick. by the way, so Karen put uh, her website, her link to her website in the chat. So um, please check it out. And you're going to take us for a little spin? I'll take you for a little spin. I'm going to do okay. one thing here. I would just comment on the last sort of a, a you know which i think is one of the th wonderful things of your of your paintings they invite multiple points of view and i think that while you don't see like a single drama going on that connects them a single story it feels like they are as if there is background music that they're moving in a shared space it doesn't feel random it is what it is to be in a city sometimes you're out you're out there and you're not having conversations but you feel in another way you have you yeah. you have yeah. been with people and it is different than stopping to have a particular transaction or a particular conversation but it doesn't feel as if there there there's there feels some sort of shared moment without the need for a for identifying a a everyone looking in the same direction um, there, there's that randomness seems to come together in a kind of wonderful, uh, as you know, and I can see the influence of dance very much in your work because it really comes to the physicality of it. Um, it's, well, it's, you. it's very fun. It's good. <laughs> okay. okay. To give us a once, once over a spin. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. If, uh, so if I walk around with this, let me just unplug here. Okay. So I'm. <laughs> this is uh, actually a show that is not a show. Uh, I canceled this the last show at the gallery for multiple reasons, uh, but we put it up uh, just sort of some of it for a group that was coming through. So I'm gonna just turn this, see if I can turn this around. I showed you well, there's that, that painting. Yeah. That mm -hmm. gives you an idea. And then here's the, uh, this one. 
So it gives you an idea of the scale of it. Uh, so this is, I'm not, I'm not seeing what you're seeing actually. <laughs> I don't know if I've got, got you in view or not. Uh, then over on this side, you can actually, I just finished painting this one today. Uh, so this is what you were looking at, this Milongo uh, painting. This is Skip Lawrence here. He was here teaching a workshop. Here is the cello player. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a couple of other paintings. I'll, this is my studio room. It's pretty dark in here now, but I've got this great big uh, skylight up there that during the day, it's great for painting. Here's the central bar. Uh, I'll put that up. So I can get that in. And just some of my 10 by 10, 10 by 11 COVID paintings actually wound up getting framed. That's the ones that I did like 100 of them. Anyway, so this, I don't know if we can get the idea of the whole room. It's a pretty small space. There's my, we have my paints. Am I giving you my paint table? Yeah, that's my Nova paints down there. So this is, yeah, this is the little room that I do most of my painting. Sometimes I'll come out, uh, bring my easel out like I, I did with this one today uh, and paint out here. But that's it. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ruth, for wonderful. allowing us into your studio, into your life, into your mind, into your artwork. I really beautiful. appreciate it. Just beautiful. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank well, you. Looking everyone. at hmm? looking at what everybody else has done, you know, with these presentations, I. I did not feel like I had a whole lot to tell you or show you, oh, you but uh, as I started putting it together, I guess you were wrong. More than enough. Oh, you did very well. Wow. It's surprising how much, you know, when you start talking about your work and, you know, because we're always inside our mind, we don't, we yeah. think, oh, it's, we know it, but once you start talking about it and sharing, uh, there's a lot of depth and I'm looking forward to January when we have Pamela's work and um, and I I hope others come by and and want to present because I'd look you know I, this is a good way to get to know our members and get to know your artwork and see each of you in your home in your studio and sharing all your beautiful beautiful artwork all righty so with that, I bid you good night and adieu.